Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Assassin's Den podcast. I'm your host, Loomer, joined by Esco Blades, as always. Hello, Esco. Hi there. How you doing? Good, good. So before we go any further, I'm going to warn that this episode contains full spoilers for Assassin's Creed 4, uh, just so you're aware of that. Uh, now, with that said, today we're very excited to welcome Olivia Morgan to the podcast, who voices my personal favorite character in Assassin's Creed 4, yeah, uh, <laughs> James Kidd, <laughs> a.k.a. Mary Reed. Olivia, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Great. <laughs> now, as always, we've collected questions from the Assassin's Creed community that we'll be asking Olivia throughout the podcast. So to start off, actually, I th- there's this question we have from AC Fan, uh, who's from Boston. I thought this would be a nice one to kick off the podcast with. Um, they ask, were you familiar with the Assassin's Creed franchise before you decided to voice James Kidd? And if not, did your experience inspire you to learn more about it? I wasn't particularly familiar with it. Um, I'd seen a lot of posters and I'd heard a lot of talk from people that do play computer games, like how incredible it is. Um, but I didn't really know what it was, and in fact, when I auditioned for it, I was told that it was for a TV series about pirates. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then when I got like down to, oh, I think like the the recall or something like that, that's when we found out it was a computer game, um, and it was really hush hush. Like you couldn't, I, I couldn't tell anyone that I that I'd gone for this audition, um, and that I was, you know, in the running for it. So I, I liked all that. I found all that quite intriguing. Um, <laughs> you know, I kind of like quite cool that there's this whole, you know, mass of people that want to know about the game so much that, that they keep it such a secret. It's since the game has come out, uh, the second part of the question was, if not, did your experience inspire you to learn more about it? Have you looked more into the series or has it pretty much been self-contained? Oh, I know. Well, I did when I was doing it and when I got the, I think when I was, auditioning and stuff and when I got the role I went I wikipedia the previous games I'm I don't I'm not I don't play that many games really in fact the only ones I've ever played I think would be like football ones so yeah I would love to play it but I used to be when I was a kid I used to be really scared of games like of of, of going around corners and you know meeting people that might kill you so I, I, I I've never I've never gone to play this game okay <laughs> Well, you can always, um, uh, there's this one person, especially, I forget his name, but he actually makes um, edits of all the games into movies. Like oh, wow. He cuts the gameplay and the cutscenes together on YouTube, so you can just sit down for like something like three or four hours or something and then just wow. watch the story play out. It's actually really cool. So it's always wow. an option if you want to um, either catch up with the series or even see how AC4 plays out. Um, it's very cool. On a kind of similar note, I was kind of wondering... Um, you know, the we were talking a little bit before the podcast about how the the AC fan base is very rabid. It's very they're very passionate people, and I was wondering um, how much how if you've gotten a sense of that since the game has come out, or if that's not really the case. Since I know you're kind of not super present on like social media and like out there in <laughs> in, in the inter- internet land, you know, how much exposure you've had to the fandom, and if you're aware of how big this series is. I. Uh... Do you know, the most, the, the biggest experience I've had of it is um, I was talking to a Polish chef um, and he asked me what what he might know me from and I was like, oh, I don't know. I did a computer game and then his eyes lit up and then I told him it was three, four and that was it. <laughs> I think he would have cooked me anything. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, oh. That's the closest I've, I've come to you know oh, uh, interesting hearing about it but yeah no i i it's it's not a lot of my friends aren't, aren't massive gamers i don't think so oh, okay i haven't i don't into contact with it that much so you haven't seen like any of the fan art for mary reed and james kidd or like anything like no character stuff no. oh it's crazy it's we'll it. we'll have to uh put some together and like send it to you oh. or people can tweet it at you as well we'll go over your twitter and stuff at the end or it'll be in the video description but definitely it's like you know it's it's really cool i think to see how much people love all the characters and um you know mary reed especially a lot of people really like how she turned out in ac4 it's i they did an amazing job of it like the of, of making her you know male enough in the beginning and then yeah <laughs> right it's really impressive i think
it's, it's cool you mentioned that actually because one of the things that I was very interested to know and there's a uh, community question about it as well is how much research you got to do into the real life uh, you know Mary okay. Reed and um, one of the community questions is from Alfred L who's in Canada and he asks if you did any research into uh, Mary Reed in real life uh, for preparation for the role and if there was anything interesting about her that didn't make it into the game I did. I did do a lot of research, actually, um, and um, because in fact, originally, I think I was going out to play a, um, a different character who I don't even know if she made it into the oh. into the game, mm. which was a was a really Scottish uh, character that I think she ran the ships or something, or she showed that... Edward how to use the ships. I don't know if that mm. character made it in. It doesn't sound familiar. That's interesting. Yeah. You're you're very Scottish. Uh, I am. I'm <laughs> totally Scottish. Um, but m because my voice was low, they d that's why they thought it would be useful for James for James Kidd. Yeah. Um, and I yeah I started researching about it and I found it really like absolutely fascinating because it was um, I didn't know that female pirates really existed. You know. Yeah. Um, and that, from what I remember, is that, that Mary Reed and Anne Bonny were two, you know, completely real figures. And like, the, just the audacity that they had, I, th I just found it com astonishing, really, that they could live in such a, a crazy world, you know. And in fact, randomly, I went to see a, uh, an exhibition recently of, um, of Turner paintings. Uh, that were all, you know, when he's painting in the sea. And I was just thinking, gee whiz, like, these women, you know, they, they were hard enough to, to be out in these stormy stormy seas and, and survive. I, I, yeah, I did do a lot of research. It's, it's kind of in the back of my memory now, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to um, put a little plug in here for anybody who's interested in actually learning more about kind of like the real life Mary Reed and Bunny stuff. Um, UV Workshop has a book that they released called, uh, well, it's it's basically a hardback edition of a French magazine called Historia, and it's Pirates, the Scourge of the Caribbean. It has a lot of stories about the real-life pirates, but they kind of intersperse it with AC4 concept art, which is kind of cool. But the whole thing is actually very historical, and they have a whole section on, like, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, and it's, like, some really interesting stuff in there, like how... Um, it, like when I was playing the game, I didn't really know that much about it. And I, afterwards, I came out wondering if um, the whole Mary Reed being a boy was just kind of something that Darby wrote to just kind of, I don't know, throw like a twist in there or I, I don't even know. But then like you start reading about it and it turns out like Mary was raised as a boy pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Um, like this, these crazy things like her mom is something about like her mom had a son and she was receiving like a pension from her mother-in-law. And then the son died, and so she had Mary in secret, and then dressed her up as a boy to pass pass Mary off as this boy, so she could still keep getting the money, and yeah. like all this like crazy stuff. And like apparently, um, I think the, the the son who died was named Willie Reed, and that's the name that Mary actually used when she was um, not James Kidd. It was Willie Reed that she was using when she was like going around doing all this stuff. And I think um, as far as like interesting stuff that didn't make it into the game. Um, I think probably the biggest thing that we've talked about with Darby in our podcast with Darby was the whole um, very kind of famous incident where they were, uh, you know, arrested. Yeah. Uh, with and it was basically like Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed standing on the ship, and like Calico Jack and all the other people were like drunk and like scared, like below decks, and it's like <laughs> these two women just like really ferocious, like just <laughs> taking a stand. <laughs> And that was cut, like a sequence that was cut from the game. I think it's probably the biggest uh, thing. I don't know if you heard, did you hear much yeah. about that sequence being cut or was everything? No, I didn't. But I, well, I do remember Darby really wanting it in. <laughs> I just, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they it still got the stuff about abortion and, and not abortion, but having the kid, right? Yes, yes. The pregnancy <laughs> yeah. stuff was still in. Um, but yeah, the whole leading up to their capture and everything was supposed to be um, kind of like a sequence or whatever. And when you read about the historical aspect of it, it's kind of really interesting uh, because like they, both Anne and Mary seem so ferocious. Um, yeah. The story goes, like more so than I think they kind of come across in the game. Like when, when that uh, was going on, they actually like fired into the lower decks because like the men were being cowards. 
like yeah. to get them and they like killed one and like wounded a few others including calico jack and like it's yeah. just crazy stuff <laughs> well they're hard i mean they're hardcore yeah just, i've never met a woman like it <laughs> <laughs> never met a man like them you know <laughs> <laughs> So we have another question from the community. This is from Super Saiyan 3985 from Lexington, Kentucky, um, who asks, how did it feel voicing a female disguised as a male? And uh, second question we can come back to is, who did you feel more attached to, James Kidd or Mary <laughs> Reed? <laughs> uh, oh, that's difficult. Um, ooh, uh, how did it feel? It was a lot of fun, actually. I mean, I don't know if... <laughs> It's it's the same as like you know if you in in the Shakespeare plays as well you know you've got a whole heap of women who dress up as men and then they're men for most of the play and mm. often uh, as a woman you, you, you when you're a, a female actress or whatever you often the lines that you have are never as well written or um, as as terrible as they, they often don't have as much to say as the men. Which is crazy because women also have a lot to say a lot of the time. Um, so it was really fun to be, you know, in a game that is quite a man's world um, and be able to be doing a lot in it. I think it's quite rare, you know. And then the transformation was a lot of fun because I think we talked a little bit about whether she'd alter her voice, and I. I think we came to the conclusion that it because she lives so long effectively as a man you know living this lie kind of thing that there didn't need to be much change you know but I liked the reveal they showed the, um, that when we were when we were recording the voice because I think it I think it had just been drawn around that time mm. and it was, it was really cool <laughs> So who do, uh, the second part of the question is, who do you feel more attached to, James Kidd or Mary Reed? Who do I feel more attached to? Uh, ooh, um, I reckon I probably felt more attached to, I think, Mary, because that's who she is in, in her heart, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, yeah, definitely, yeah, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. So you kind of alluded to kind of the um, Shakespeare plays and all that. And I was kind of interested um, about uh, your experience with voicing uh, Mary Reed because it's, uh, you know, your your background is, you've done some acting in like, you know, television and stuff, but it's a lot of it is uh, stage performance, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of Shakespearean plays. And uh, in recent years, the big thing in video games has been um, performance capture, which is where, uh, yeah. you know, you do the, the motion, you put on the motion capture suit, so it captures your movements, your facial animations, and your voice all at the same time. So it's literally your entire performance, like, encapsulated in the game. But for both Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, um, yeah. you and Sarah, I believe, um, only ended up doing the voice uh, mm. for it as well. Uh, <laughs> instead of, and I think most of the other people in AC4 did the full motion capture. I think it turned out great, which is kind of interesting because... I don't know, there's so much that's been made about performance capture. <laughs> it's, um, but I was kind of curious, um, you know, because it's, it, you know, I think doing performance capture um, is very much like kind of doing um, stage performance um, theater. Uh, we've talked to some of the other actors that have done that, and they say it's similar. I was curious if, you, uh, if you'd wanted to do the full performance. Uh, like, I think it was just timing or... I, oh God, I would love to have gone out to Montreal and do it and done it. Um, and I think Sarah was the same. I think we were both <laughs> um, upset that we couldn't go. Yeah. Um, but I think we were both busy, so we, we weren't able to. But I, I, it was quite difficult for us because of that. Because, well, not difficult, but it was, it was a completely new experience because you would watch the video of the, the girls that were doing your character and like if you watch a kind of score of music you would match your voice to their movements um and you had a very specific time limit in their movement to to capture it if that makes sense yes 
Um, and if you were outside of that time limit, then you know, you'd have to do it again. Um, but once you got used to that, it was it was a lot of fun. And but yeah, I think I mean I know one of the actors that was in in it playing um, Rackham. I think no Blackbeard. I think he was playing Blackbeard. Uh, yes, he was. I think it's Mark Bonner. I think. Yeah, Mark. Um, yeah, he said it was. He said it was very similar to to kind of theatre or film more really because you have to hit your mark. And I think he he really enjoyed doing it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of similar, I guess. I guess that obviously informs what the next question was, which is uh-huh. from H, <laughs> which is from H Rose uh, in Detroit, and uh, they ask uh, if there were any funny behind the scenes stories that you can share. But I'm guessing maybe that was limited because you weren't physically in Montreal with the rest of the yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I mean, um I'm trying to think if me and Sarah had any uh, random moments. Um, no, I don't. But I do remember my first meeting with Darby, where we met after. So after I got the job, yeah, I think he flew in to do a week's recording with me and Sarah, and um, uh, and I remember meeting Darby in a Starbucks in <laughs> the middle of um, London, uh, in a bit of London actually that was quite. Like you just you, you, a random assortment of people, not like central, you know. Yeah. And he told me the entire story of Assassin's Creed Four, um, but in like uh, in a whisper because he didn't want any <laughs> <laughs> the cafe. You know, what was what was being you know spoiler alert? Yeah. It was that that was yeah that was a lot of fun. That that sounds like Davi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. Really animated, you know, and. and it was glorious. I just I turned up. He bought me a coffee, and <laughs> told me a story for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's kind of interesting, though. So, wait, did you and were, so you and Sarah were uh, together in the recording booth, kind of? Maybe not at the same time, but you two. Um, we had. Uh, what did we do? We we were there together. I think when we did our so the bit that was cut. I think we were in the studio the same day then. Um, but but she and I were both in the in the West End at the same time, so we had a bit of a drink and a and a kind of exchange. How's your show going? And isn't this fun? Yeah. Um, but we did. We weren't in the recording thing together. We were there as well. I think for the first time we met Darby and Karma after we bought after we got the jobs, and I think meeting the director. I think I think we just had a day where they were sh- they showed us what our characters would look like. And yeah, and told us and showed a bit of the gameplay that I think was, you know, some of it had been made by that point, and some of it yeah. was nowhere near to being made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind of fascinates me about the the character of Mary Reed um, is when, like, I was I got this when I was talking to Darby is just how it, it feels like it almost didn't happen uh, like in a very good way because like I, he was saying like at the last minute. Um, like they were still trying to decide on the right look for her character. Like they weren't oh, totally yeah. happy with it. And like it was literally just a week or two before he met you that like they they finally like one of the artists finally nailed the look and they're like, oh, okay, like, yeah, this is this is what we're going for. And yes. then even you voicing, I think, came very late in like, I think you, uh, I, I seem to remember him telling me that like you and maybe Sarah as well were cast very late in the process. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. it's just, it's kind of amazing to me that like, you know, I love this character so much and so many other fans do, but it's like, it was almost like kind of slipshod, just like, like almost crammed together at the last minute and it came out so yeah. well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I mean, it was, it, it is interesting cause it's, it's, I think it's very difficult when you, uh, to make the, the, the character male enough to be male and not sexual. Mm. Uh, and I think when in the drawings and stuff like that, I think it's, it's, it's very hard not to do that with a female, you know, a character that you essentially know as a female yeah. at the end of the day. You see what I mean? Yeah. And I think that Darby was really strong in, th- like, knowing that the need was about, that that James needed to be, like, raw enough to not appear f- a feminine. You, you see what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I think if she was, if she did look to female, that it wouldn't work in his narrative. Yeah. And I think 
that that's yeah I think that that's a really it's a really hard thing to achieve and I think it's exactly like that it's like as soon as you get that look it's like yeah of course god it's, it was that all along you know we all knew it we just didn't get you know yeah. but until that happens yeah like almost like an androgynous look that's masculine enough that you can believe people would buy into yeah. him being a male but you know feminine enough that once the reveal is done you can go back and be like oh yeah it's like you're not looking at you know Brad Pitt or someone yeah, who looks like yeah. like if you look like if James looked like Adwale you know it's like yeah. <laughs> it's like oh I'm a woman it's like no what <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, impossible exactly. <laughs> like, like just don't bother yeah So we have some more community questions. Um, these kind of go a little bit together. One is from uh, Katharina from Germany, who asks, what is your favorite scene with Mary in the game? And then Call96 from England says, uh, what do you think was the best line in the game? So favorite scene and or line, if you have one. Uh, I might not be able to help you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my favorite scene was probably the reveal. The reveal, yes. yes. Yeah, most definitely the reveal. I my favorite line I can't remember but I think do I get am I the lucky one that gets the Assassin's Creed line? Yes. Yes, uh, I am. <laughs> I think I I think I remember recording that and thinking god this is a bit this this is this is a bit of a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so um I guess as long as I nailed that line or as long as that line didn't feel too um Terrible, then I'm, I hope that I think that might be my favorite line okay. the Assassin's Creed line. Yeah, I, I love that exchange too because you know, um, James is like, you know, nothing is true, everything is permitted, and then Edward's like, yep, sounds good to me, dude. and then James is like, wait, wait. <laughs> 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 I really love that. Um, one of my favorite lines actually is um, later on after um, Mary's revealed herself to Edward and Edward's basically like, you know, hey, what's your what's your real name? And then she replies with, um, you know, my name's Mary Reed and blah. Oh, Mary Reed to my mom and then I call friends, but not a word of it to anyone. Or I'll unman you as well. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Brilliant. He's a good writer, Darby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You want me to say it? Oh, yeah, if you could, that'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, Mary read to my mum and then I call friends but not a word of it to anyone or I'll unman you as well <laughs> <That's> awesome <laughs> oh I love that and what I love about that scene too I know you didn't actually get to do this because it wasn't the performance capture but she's kind of like leaning in and almost like making a grab for his crotch like oh, yeah, yeah. in a way that's like <laughs> yeah just just don't <laughs> But that's I gotta say actually the 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 girl that did the performance capture was really good like physically do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. it was very easy to voice her because she she gave a lot to the body I guess mm -hmm. yeah. my favorite one I'm gonna put in here now was when when she first meets Kenway and she says oh fancy seeing you here looking sleek and mean did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana <laughs> oh yeah that was a good one <laughs> that was a good one. Fancy seeing you here, Kenway, still looking sleek and mean. Did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana? Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah good. What I remember about the recording is that no matter how low I went, I would always have to go lower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, I I know it's tough for I think both you and Sarah. These were like very quick, like you know, one or two week jobs, and then like done. And it was like you know, six eight, months, you know, it was a long time ago. I think is that right? I think it's the impression I got yeah, talking to Darby think, like these. Well, I think I did mine when I was doing. Um, I think we just opened a show, and I didn't have much time, so I did like two or three mornings. And maybe I think a couple of months later, I came back into the studio to do some, to do uh, the uh, what's it called? Like when you do, you do a loop of the of the gameplay noises. Mm. So you kind of just go in and make like silly noises. <laughs> okay, it. like the sound effects, like when yeah, yeah, jumping yeah. or getting hit or Absolutely something. Things. It was okay. brilliant, fun. In fact, I'd never had that experience before, and, and <laughs> some, 
there was a, a, a guy that came in to demonstrate the noise first. So like, so say if you got like slash and then stab, you know, yeah. <laughs> then he would do the noise of what both of those things would be. And then you'd, yeah. you'd do it in as the character. Great fun. <laughs> So we have um, a couple line requests actually from the community. Um, one is this one I love is from Beronov from France, and she actually asked um, Tristan to say this line as Adewale as well, and I really enjoyed this. And she says, "Hello, Olivia. I was wondering if you could say, I 'I'm so tired of your shit, Edward.' Would be so kind of you." <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Um, I'm so tired of your shit, Edward. Is that right? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's kind of great, yeah. And I love this. I love these lines um, from um, Addie and James because um, you know those two characters. I feel like are really more than anyone else. Kind of, um, I don't know how to best describe it. But Edward's kind of compass, like moral compass, or kind of the yeah. wise old owls of the game, where they kind of have their shit together and they're trying to steer them in the right direction. And yeah, it's just, totally. And then Edward's just being Edward. And so I think a lot of the fan community is just, you know, I'm sure they all thought like, you know, in their heads, like you can just imagine both Eddie and James just being like, I'm so fucking tired of your shit. <laughs> like, oh, <yeah. laughs> totally. I do remember doing a lot of lines like that ad nauseum. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and we have one more uh, line request here. This is from, uh, I think it's Konichiwa but spelled in a really funny way. Um, but they say, line request, you know nothing, Edward Kenway. You know nothing, Edward Kenway. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing. Oh, uh, poor Edward. Thank you for indulging us in the in the fan community. No <laughs> problem. Nice. I'm going to have to play the game. I wanted them to give me a copy of it for, for doing the... Uh... Oh my God, they didn't give you a copy? I didn't get a copy of it. Wait, oh, shit. what? That's insane. <laughs> Play it on, so. This should be rectified. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you, tell of... him, you tell him from me. Yeah, we'll poke Darby James here. Kidd's going to come after you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's going to unman all of you. Yeah, you don't exactly. give her a copy of EC4. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll walk up to him, actually, because he, he just sits around the corner. So like, I usually see him when he's smoking or something. I'll just go, hey, I was speaking to Olivia and... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, you tell him. Yeah. All right, so we have a couple questions regarding kind of the story of AC4, and then we'll wrap it up. Yes, so we have one from uh, Colorous Me from the Netherlands. <laughs> and, okay, this is interesting to me because there's a lot of <laughs> fan questions that are along this line. Uh, they ask, um, did you think there was some kind of, some sort of attraction or even sexual tension between Edward and Kid slash Mary, or do you think they were just best friends, sometimes casually flirting for the fun of it? <laughs> <laughs> um, definite attraction. Definitely. Mm. <laughs> like in a romantic way? No, I think in a, mm. in like a buddy way. Yeah. You know, uh, in the same way that, you know, you can... You can have great trust and um, affection and attraction to anyone that is very close to you, I think. And that it, basically, anyone that you kind of really trust your life and soul with, I think you have that kind of attraction to as well. Yeah, kind of platonic love. Yeah, yeah. And a kind of like like a bromance, but then... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I personally don't think Mary Reed was attracted to Edward at all. Yeah, you know, I never got that. A lot of people in the community really kind of want them to be a thing, I guess. Maybe oh. not a lot, but there's a section of the community. I always thought it was kind of interesting because I never got that um, impression. Um, mm. I got very much like what you were saying, kind of just like a very, like a bromance or like, very, but they, you can tell that they really care about each other. And I think it's very telling that when Mary Reed dies, like, you know, a lot of Edward's friends die in the game, like, pretty much all of them except for like Anne and Adewale but it's really Mary's death that sends him over the edge and pushes him to become a better person and that line that Edward has when you're just like holding Mary in the prison and it's like you've done all this work to get her out and like but she dies and he's like I ain't leaving you and he's just like so like oh my god yeah. that just ripped me apart oh, I was just I oh my god it is yeah it's amazing but it's it's I think it's because it's a true, it's kind of based on, you know, she did die. I yeah. think as well yeah. is, is such a, 
has a double effect, you know? Yeah, I've seen people be go like tweet to Darby or post somewhere like like damn it Darby, why do you have to kill off all the characters I love? And he's basically like, Well, blame history. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like these were pirates. They didn't have a very long lifespan. <laughs> you know. I remember being like that with Darby being like, Oh man, it's a shame she dies because like she could yeah. go on and on. <laughs> she could have a spin off, you know. Yeah, like, definitely. No, she can <laughs> Um, I will say on the subject of uh, Mary Reed's romances, for those of you who are interested in the actual history of it, um, you might be more interested in the Mary Reed and Bonnie pairing, where in real life, Anne Bonnie was so attracted to the male version of Mary Reed that she had to eventually reveal her secret to Anne because it was that is like, right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because it was getting That's too strong. That. And also, yeah. Mary fell in love with some, it was like, I don't know, a sail. it was someone that they had taken prisoner from, like, some other ship, like, when she was out sailing with Anne and Calico Jack, and I think that's the guy who got her pregnant, actually, um, yeah. but she was, like, head over heels in love with this guy, um, whatever. If you're curious about the real life, um, you know, love life of Mary Reed, that's kind of some historical background. They covered a lot in the Historia um, thing from your yeah. workshop, like I mentioned. It's very interesting. So uh, I will ask actually, and this follows on from from the previous one, which was uh, how did you feel about uh, Mary Reed's death or how, about her dying? Um, I, I will say before you do answer that that did cut me off. I mean, there were two there were two particular scenes in the game that really tugged on the heartstrings. The first, obviously, being Blackbeard's demise. Oh god, but that's then, the one. That, yeah, yeah, but then the other being that long drawn out sequence where you know edward's like no don't don't stay with me and it's like no i'm i'm, I'm gone um, and yeah yes yeah so that question is from john, john and how yes. did you how did you feel about it i guess we already kind of touched on it um i d yeah i do remember it being quite difficult because it was um because he did write it darby did write it so well and also knowing that it is a true that she does die in real life um yeah. Yeah. makes makes it just more interesting to play, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But what I think what it came down to, very uh, black and white, is is was I had to completely match that up to the uh, the physical movements that I was given. And that in a way was more difficult. And I d and I, and also um you know, her petering out, it was I do remember it being quite difficult. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, and quite emotional. Yeah. But also at the same time, because it in involves so much focus at trying to meter it, it didn't move me personally. You see what I mean? So it's quite technical. So I, uh, this is kind of interesting, I thought, to me. Um, after she dies, Edward carries her body out to the like boat. And um, mm. I thought it was really interesting that uh, along the way you get a taxi, you have to put her body down and fight off the guards, but um, Esco is doing, have kind of, I guess it's almost like a sister podcast, it's called like the AC Initiates Network Podcast, we are talking with the game director of AC4, Ashraf Ismail, and he oh, was yeah. talking about how actually, you're not actually required to bring her body to right. the boat, and you, you, you heard about this? Yeah, no, when we, when we did it, Darby told me, uh, it, in this uh, really boyish exuberance he was like it's really cool because yeah if they really like you know if they fully appreciate that storyline that kind of um that arc then then hopefully they will they will take the body to the to the boat and he was like or they can just leave her yeah um, and there's a whole another set of cinematics that play out without her body if you just leave her but like, oh really her, yeah, yeah like they they support both paths you know like do you bring her body to the boat or you just like leave her somewhere <laughs> you know somewhere oh, along the bring way it to the boat. i know i was just like when i heard about that i was like holy shit well i definitely brought her body to the boat and i feel like That's... most people probably did too <laughs> yep. i'm glad you did <laughs> you're a good person yes yes <laughs> So what what's next for you? What other projects do you have going on? Do you have anything you can talk about? What people can see you next in? Uh, potentially, uh, the next thing, I think I'm doing a radio thing and then um, a TV thing that will be out in, well, in a 
maybe in the autumn. Maybe I'll tweet about that. Okay. That? <laughs> yeah, that when good. it's when it's coming into the into the public, I'll tweet about it. Other than that, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any of the plays that have been on cinema screen. Um, I will tweet. I'll let you know. Yeah. Excellent. So this is a good point for us to also plug your Twitter, which <laughs> is uh, <laughs> twitter.com slash Morgan. Is that correct? Uh, it's uh, it's basically Olivia Morgan, but without the IA in Olivia. Oh, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Sounds about right, yeah. So you can follow Olivia there. She doesn't tweet super often, but she will possibly start tweeting more if we bug her enough. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might do that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that's great. Okay, and so with that, I think we'll wrap up this episode of The Assassin's Den. So thank you again, Olivia, so much for joining us. It's been a real My pleasure. 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 It's lovely to chat to you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh you can uh, obviously keep up with more episodes of the Assassin's Den podcast here on my channel at youtube.com slash Loomer979, where I'm also on Twitter and Facebook at Loomer979 as well, uh, esco at acinitiates.com, as well as escoblades on Twitter and Facebook. Yep. And so with that, until next time, Olivia, do you want to sign us off? Nothing is true. Everything is permitted.